Welcome to another episode of Different Roots Radio, hosted by Dami, the chilled philosopher, and Tamein, the optimistic anthropologist. Today, we are joined by Fikayomi Agbola, who is a legend who launched her own clothing line, Bittany, in 2017. Um, Bittany is essentially contemporary, exquisite fashion, ready to wear and custom made with kind of like an African design. So um, as you can see, our model for today Tamein, is modeling the latest in menswear. And um, yeah, they have women's, men's, all sorts. We're gonna get into it and figure out the future of Bittany and what they have to offer. So thank you for joining us, Bikayomi, yeah. AKA Fiki, AKA Big F. <laughs> Is that right? You went there. I went there. You went there. <laughs> the big, we got big D, we got big F, we got big T. All right. Well, big in this house. I like big it. in the game, big in the game. Right. So um, tell us what you're doing the MBA at Manchester. Yes. Shout out Manchester mm. University. Shout out Manchester University. Um, and Dami and I did our MBA there. We're yes. loving it. Yeah. You're currently doing an internship. So yeah. how have you found running a company, starting a company in an MBA mm. and doing an internship, doing all your studies and everything? How are you balancing it all? And why did you start Bittany? Um, to start with your first question, it's a lot of work. Honestly, yeah. it's, true. <laughs> it's a lot of work. But I did not just start Bittany. I started in 2017, like I told you. But uh, moving from Nigeria to the UK, I just thought, and thanks to the MBA as well, I just thought um, I should rebrand. Because mm -hmm. obviously from learning a lot from OCV and all of those things from the MBA, I thought um, I should sort of up my game. So that's what I did. And um, rebranding this summer, I rebranded this summer, 2021. And... Um, it just takes, let me say, a lot of determination because you could literally just say, I'm tired, I'm not doing this again. Mm. So um, lots of discipline, determination, networking, trying to get like a mentor, someone that can always <clears throat> push you when you're getting tired, like, and surround your, yourself with like good energy, good friends, mm. and good family members, like who can push you to basically be the best you can be. Dami actually wrote a quote on our Instagram at Different Roots Radio, in case you're not following. And he wrote, um, surround yourself with friends who force you to level up. Yeah. So you said level That's up, true. you wanted to level up. I'm sure you're very different Roots Radio, we like your style. Yes, exactly <laughs> that. So um, right now, you know, it's your, your head office is in Nigeria, we get that. Yeah. And you're expanding yourself internationally, you ship internationally, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So with you now being based right now just temporarily away from your business mm -hmm. um how do you manage that how do you manage you know the operations that take place predominantly in nigeria but yet you're based here in uk like is it a lot of phone calls or like emails like it's a lot of project management that i'm assuming you know that you're doing you're right it's a lot of phone calls especially whatsapp calls so i get <laughs> i get to like be online 24 7 except when i'm sleeping obviously mm -hmm. and i'm um, talking to um my fashion designer and then my manager because i have a manager as well like on the side so it's basically like a manager that works for you yes not your manager because well, you're, you're the big she's, boss she's the one that <laughs> i had to clarify you, you signed the check so <laughs> yes. i had to clarify so yes. you, you have a manager that works below you yes the manager that works for me so basically um, hashtag boss roots. <laughs> hashtag boss. So basically every day I I try to um set out what needs to be done for the day. So every day there is different things being done, right? Different things regarding sewing clothes, um, marketing, mm. social media posts, which all of those things I do myself, right? So because it's really it's a really small business for just growing. So it's a lot of time management as well, because mm. like you said, I have the MBA. I have the internship, so I always have to be on top of my game. And then uh, it seems as if even your social media, you're, we take inspiration from your social media. <laughs> the fact that you do all these reels and like, you know, you do all she's this. She's dancing, like, she'll be wearing this outfit and she'll be like, click, and then suddenly the outfit changes, then she'll go clap, clap, and then the outfit changes again. You're she, like, she's practically a TikTok star. She is. Have. No, and she I'm doesn't not. even have TikTok yet. No, I don't you would You would run that thing from your base on your reels. So the thing is, when I rebranded in, um, August, July, August, right? I had to read a lot about marketing because most of my income, I'll say, comes from Instagram, right? Most people reach out to me on Instagram and then they buzz me on WhatsApp from the Instagram link as well. So 
if you're not on top of your game with Instagram, what I've observed from like everything I've read about is that you will be behind. Even if you have like a physical store or you have like a website, you still need to, you know, level it up with Instagram. So I had to learn how to do reels, how to, you know, post pictures. You literally, like, it's actually a whole thing. There are like people who tell you, oh, this is how many times you need to post. This is, these are the insights, you know, for your page. So Instagram mm-hmm. has like insights, analytics and things like that. So I'm basically just making use of Instagram. That's true. <laughs> and for people who want to follow your footsteps of marketing or growing their brand on Instagram, where did you read all of these? Like, what, how do you know who to trust? Because every you Google how to grow on Instagram and there's like 20 different articles. So how do you know which ones to listen to and how do you know? Um, yeah. Honestly speaking, there wasn't one person in particular. I just mm, I, I just know. basically looked around and one thing that really helps is like um trending music on Instagram. So mm. like if you just click on reels, so mm. reels um not just gets to your followers, it gets to people outside your following. So mm. I think that's a really good thing. So once you click on reels, you see um trending music, you can save the music and then use it for la- later mm. on for your own post. So basically, once you see those things and then you see the Instagram, um, what do you call them? Influencers or marketers sort yeah. of thing. When you go through your reels, you see all those people. So you just get tips and tricks like from them generally. All right. All right. So um, you know what we're gonna do, T? I have just a funny idea. We're gonna make our own reel with Brittany with her couture brand. Yeah. Oh. Uh, right, right after this episode and we'll yeah, share it. You should. Yeah. 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 yeah, you should. You gotta teach us how to do all the dances though, because you see what do you mean? I was born ready to dance. <laughs> I yeah, she's, my dad, she's, she's, <laughs> she's doing catwalks and things, so she spins. Oh, I already got that done. The so. funny thing is, you think all of those things are like easy. Trust me, when I started, that was when I started respecting content creators on Instagram. Mm. It takes a video that you shoot in seven seconds, like all of those ones where you walk, change your outfits, like probably wear seven outfits, can take you three to five hours to huh. shoot. Hey. you'll be shocked so it's not as easy as you think yeah. it's really i stressful. actually i actually saw one of your reels you're like outtakes you're like behind the scenes yeah and you're like, you know, back, she goes, she's like oh, my ankle and i'm like that like, looks like me on the basketball court when i injure my ankle she was like ah, ah. It was so painful. Yeah. So, these things are funny all right so the beauty behind <laughs> social media is not always you know birds and bees is not so easy but uh, let's even dial back down into the African trends and African attire. So, you know, it's very authentic, creative, innovative, and it's a representation of art and culture. So what, what kind of inspired you towards going to particular brands or textiles? What, how does that resonate with you personally? Like as a Nigerian, is it you're going for traditional Nigerian attire or styles or things like that? I think I need to tell my story on how I actually started off. Down one, this is it. Take us down, memory lane. So, um, obviously, I'm quite fashionable, but I do not. Humble brag. Yes. <laughs> obviously, I'm also quite fashionable. Obviously, I'm uh, pretty yeah. damn fashionable. Yes. I mean, I'm just so, going to put that out there. No, right, I on. did not start off like wanting to be a fashion designer or anything. So, when I was about to start the university, like undergraduate, right? Um, you know Nigeria now, mm. you have this anko thing, so everybody wears the same outfit. Sure. And my mom usually used like the local tailor around. And she never just got my style right. It was so frustrating. So I thought, I'm the type of person that like, if rather than just keep complaining about everything, I'll just do it myself. So I thought, if this woman can do it, and she has like people working for her who are like, you know, not much older than me then i can do it as well mm. so i decided to learn mm. and that's how i started so i was sewing for my mom with a like euro that's like rapper in yoruba so i would sew for my mom for my sister i wasn't making male clothes in fact for such a long time i wasn't making male clothes i literally just started making male clothes so i was formally just female clothing when the i was last, the last few months yeah so before now i used to be bitney couture so when i rebranded i changed to just beat me because you know a girl can become bigger later and wants to like make belts, okay. make uh, perfume. perfume. Oh, so like, uh, like Gucci. Is that, is that exactly. what you're trying to do? Like, okay. 
so you Higuchi. know gotcha. exactly so um i decided to just have it as bitney so that was where i started from right mm. quickly where did the name bitney come from oh my god that's a long story oh all right give it to us in 20 seconds or elevator less. pitch go of how the name came so the thing is it's it, it has nothing to do with africa or whatever so when i was in secondary school i went to a boarding school and we saw this movie um White chicks. Have you seen white chicks? <laughs> do you want to do your song? <laughs> <laughs> one of one of the ladies. I need you. And I miss of, you. And, and it's crazy that you know I'm saying this here because when people ask me, I just tell them long story because I don't want to go into it. One of the ladies, her name was Bitney. Yes. The other one was Tiffany. Yes. But it was Britney. Mm. But in my in my school, then we're in like first year GSS one, and everybody just mistook Britney for Bitney. And then I'm like, I like the girl. I started writing on all my books, beat me, beat me, beat me. Mm. And then it stuck. And then my Facebook name, then, you know, when you don't use your real name, you use your nickname, then I, I use beat me. And, and then I just stuck. thought, it's a beautiful name. It is. Fun fact. <laughs> fun fact. Uh, Dami actually dressed up as one of the girls from White Chicks for yes. Halloween. Yes, yes. So hopefully he'll be yeah. kind enough to let me stick that, that picture into the video of this episode. <laughs> so if you're listening to this, jump on YouTube, watch the video, YouTube, Different Roots Radio, and you can see Dami dressed up as a white chick. And he slayed. He slayed. Really? He, might have, he might have been as, more fashionable. As a white chick. <laughs> I know the struggle. That's, That's right. Yeah. I didn't go for the Terry Crews look. I went for the actual white chicks. I was Britney from... <laughs> You know, white chicks. Your mom is sold uh, that when she breastfeeds, she breastfeeds powder. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Your mother's so old that her breast milk is powdered. You breastfeed like this. You could be your, your new like icon model. Oh, like, please. You're, you're coming you know, already, you know, already happy as yes, that. But thank you. <laughs> so, so like you're the Ankara, Anka, me doing Ankara now, it's not just Ankara. It's, mm. like, it's not just African prints. Like I made this pants. It's not mm. These are pretty cool. They look very English. Like Yes. Yeah. So I make ready to wear corporate outfits for guys, mm. for men and women. So it's not just African print, but I generally want to be known for like African prints. Yeah. Because obviously even the just in Nigeria alone, like um, the fashion industry in Nigeria employs is like the sec second largest employer, mm. right? So generally, it's not tapped into enough. And I would like the world to know more about African things. You know something that's crazy? There's this brand, um, you know what it is, but I don't know if I've used what the Ghana Ghana go bags, like the Ghana must go Ghana bags, must they're go. like big, mm -hmm. big like plastic bags we got them everywhere in nigeria oh, the big shopping bags yeah the big shopping bags yeah, yeah, yeah. there's like it's either alexander mcqueen or like gucci they're selling the exact same bag yeah. for like two thousand so or like three thousand yeah. my cousin in america called me he's like he like sending our family cousin what's our group can someone send me those bags to america i'm about <laughs> to make a hustle he's like these motherfuckers are buying oops these guys are buying it for like two thousand I'm, I'm about to get this bread so we yeah. so we sent him something he's gonna start a little business selling them he's like yeah you can, you can pay two thousand or you can buy it for me for 500 exactly yeah. and then we buy it for like one pound mm. so, it's like, <laughs> so it's like it's crazy yeah so yeah they, they're ripping like designers have for a while like high-end fashion been taking um, styles and fashion from Africa and from black but culture, like you, you even know, the guy in Gucci, um, you, yeah, the black on. guy, um, what's his name? Who? Black Dan? guy in Gucci. The designer Dan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Designer Come Dan. On. Designer. Is it designer That's Dan? his name. That's his name. That's so everyone knows him. As yeah, that guy. Yeah, so they hired him because they kept on like taking all of his his styles and then yeah. people kept on complaining so then they're like but just work for gucci african print has actually been used in a lot of mainstream now too like yeah. it's been popularized by um we had beyonce alicia exactly. keys you know even the first lady she wore some african attire yeah. so mm -hmm. it's like it's something that's you know coming into main into the, the light as this is fashionable this is acceptable yeah. attire so but yeah it is and then going back to the size market of um, African clothing and footwear, it's like $31 billion industry. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So if, if you are able, and it is an expanding business now too, yeah. right? So yeah. the predominant markets are, that buy it are actually from Europe and America, mm -hmm. you know? So the fact that now that you are expanding and allowing international shipping and all that stuff, you know, you're really tapped into a profitable yep. market. Yep. Your tailor is based in Nigeria, right? 
Yes. And when we when you started out, did you make the clothes or did you have a tailor from the beginning? No, when I started oh. out, I was making the clothes. I was cutting and so, doing everything. Big boss. But, um, <laughs> do you find that most of your clients are in Nigeria, England, or like what's the split now? And also, are there other countries that you sell to, or is it just Nigeria and England mainly? Um, so right now, I think it's um fifty percent in Nigeria and then internationally fifty percent, but not just like in England. I recently shipped like in bulk to the US yes. and um I'm getting some more orders from the Canadian um market. Thank Did you. you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he hooked me up with someone and um, that was really helpful. So yeah. yes. Um and I think you'll be shocked how people here really like African prints. Mm. You know, um, I read somewhere that it all started from the fact that um, Black women are curvy, mm. you know, so that's why people started looking at African prints, right? You know, now there's the old body positivity thing, you know, uh-huh. you could be slim, you could be, you could look anyhow. Yes, as long you as look anyhow. You could be thick. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> slim thick? Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Wait, anything with thick and I'm good with that. Oh, well. <laughs> To me, his mother, speak to your son. <laughs> as long as you're healthy, you're mm. fine. But however, if seeing that like um, women, African women being COVID mm. was one of the reasons why people really started looking at like African prints, yeah. then it still shows that a lot of work needs to be done with the whole body positivity thing, right? Mm. Mm. But generally, um, unlike like um, in the olden days where it was just like Ankara, um, Kaftas and uh, yes. Siki and things like that. Ankara as a fabric as now, you know, the print in particular, they now use it for like um, different fabrics. They do spandex, they do kimo- um, chiffon. Mm. So now they use same Ankara prints to, do, to make shoes, to make headband ads. So it's not very, very versatile. Unlike Ooh, before. Maybe so, a headband. Can you make me a basketball kit? <laughs> Oh that would imagine me turning up on a basketball court, tween, 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 Hezzy, Kobe, and then just like, and it rims out, just like Nick Young. <laughs> you celebrate. I celebrate before it goes in. <laughs> then it misses. Yeah, but um, but yeah, it's true. It's very versatile, and mm-hmm. um, a little bit going back to you bulk shipping to US. Now they have an act called the Growth and Op- African Growth and Opportunity Act that allows you to ship to the US. Uh, in large box for up to seven hundred dollars without doing customs. So is that something that you've kind of been utilizing now, or oh, is that like I said, I just started in twenty twenty, ah, like literally ah. like three months ago. So okay. I'm hearing that for the first time. Thank okay. you. So I'm going to look a into tip it. A little tip for everyone out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good tip. But um, you know that they say that 97% of clothing manufacturers in like third world countries. Oh, you're going to. Speaking going of to social Asia. issues. Okay, he's I done it. To, he's done to... it. He said it to me, activated. <laughs> Speaking of social issues, what I want to know is because in like developing countries, um, mm-hmm. they don't have like the right infrastructure. There isn't human rights, a bit dodgy. Mm-hmm. Um, like with COVID, for example, not, no one gets like the protective. Yeah. What's it, what's it called? P P E P. I was gonna say P V C. P P E. There you go. I was a P P E. P P E. Um, did you find a lot of differences in during COVID? And also, you guys don't use child labourers, do you? Because I know a lot of these, a lot of these well, developing countries, if, they've got some dodgy, like, especially civil, Nike. What are you talking about? Like my parents, <laughs> they got free child labour. Yeah, we were child we children. We were child labour. I had to move their entire house so many times. <laughs> Myself, like, I still have to do. I'm 34. <laughs> They're like, look, get your butt back to London. We're moving house. Yeah. You need to carry boxes. And I'm like, oh, but yeah. I, I think it, it would be difficult to have a child like make things like this. So mm. no, we don't do child labor, right? And with regards to like, um, like COVID and like health and safety things like that. But you don't have a big factory or anything like that. No, do I don't have. So have I, I, and that. then during COVID, I wasn't even manufacturing. It was like because COVID just in like August. July, like I started like sewing again because like I had to stop because of the MBA. Mm. So generally I wasn't doing anything during COVID. So oh, cool. And um, what about like wastage? Because like 70, I've got some facts. Oh, I've got some stats for you, not, Dami. You sit on the right <laughs> side of the room now. Now I suddenly now feel like I'm getting the, the I should be so <laughs> on this side. Uh, 73% of clothes end up in landfills. Mm. So like clothes that are sold end up in landfills, wasted. So what do you do about wastage? And do you, because you're small, do you not have that problem yet? Or, you know, 
how does it work? Or it just all builds up in your closet no, so somewhere. Yeah. And you one, say, one thing is, and you give it to me for free. <laughs> one thing is, <laughs> me, I would cheap, say, bro, I would crypto. say, I don't really, I don't have that problem yet. However, the little, um, you know, fabric that could constitute wastage. One thing I'm known for is how I manage fabric. So you know, we also make like, um custom make made out of it like actually Ashe- yes. you can um give us like your fabric and then we make it in bulk so people would generally give me like two years fabric three years and be like i'm not sure i can make it i would manage your fabric like i don't mm. waste fabric so i'm generally known for that and then you know the way um this patchwork um is now a trend so you have this shirt for example because patchwork is it patchwork huh? is it different materials so usually we used to make this with different materials mm. but now seeing that like it's a thing people mm. really like it they now make ankara that look like patch oh wow nice. so what i do with like clothes that like waste mm. that are supposed to waste is i make things like this with it oh interesting cool. yeah oh wow that's a nice that's a nice way to you know be economical but fashionable at the same time yep. so. yeah. eco-friendly company you should uh, get a little stamp on your website really looking like obviously because i'm still brewing i'm really looking at sustainable fashion it's something that really mm. interests me and the old like child labor thing i'm also lo- like reading about fair trade right mm. so yeah nice and then so uh i guess this is this is your current fashion line that you're doing right now you said that you also you're kind of well known for the summer look, the casual summer look, but yeah. you're kind of expanding your closet, so to speak, yeah. um, to be more winter wear and versatile and things like that. Yes, look out, watch out on Bitney. I'm going to be. What's that Instagram? At by Bitney. Uh, at oh, by just, Bitney. Just like that, eh? And uh, if you want to follow <laughs> so, them, follow Different Roots Radio at Different Roots Radio. You know, just do two for one. Buy two one, for one. Free. <laughs> and you, that's how we do. That's how we do. Hashtag, Hashtag buy one, one, get one free. <laughs> Hashtag support black brands. Hashtag support your local businesses. Yes. Hashtag ready to wear. Let's go. Hashtag black history month. Hashtag, but it's not black. It is now. It so is many now. hashtags. Hashtag Nigerian Independence Day last week. Oh. So follow us to well, support the Nigerian. Not at the time of this release, but, you know, from That's a good October point. 1st. Nigerian Independence <laughs> Month. Let's go. Wakanda Let's go. forever. Wakanda forever. Super Eagles. Um, <laughs> anyways, so... Let, I guess right now you're still small. You don't have an official website right now, no. right? So let's even talk about e-commerce and mm-hmm. African, uh, using uh, online platforms to sell your, your mm-hmm. product. So we have things like Shopify that a lot of people go to, yep. right? So typically when you list with Shopify, they ask for 10 to 15% mm-hmm. of commission as for using that platform. Yeah. Um, from right now, because you're going through direct to consumer mm-hmm. um do you see any sort of obstacles or what are you waiting for to, before you venture onto the the website platform um i would say no really a couple of people let me see um out of a hundred percent i would say five percent of the people have probably asked me if i had a website before mm-hmm. so most people um most people just use instagram like or whatsapp and like i'm cur- constantly in their faces always posting so they know i'm there i also like use links from instagram and put it on whatsapp right so that mm. people can um you know tap it and open it so but now seeing that five percent is is not so small right mm. is potential loss 15 percent that's their charge <laughs> so um seeing that up to five percent of people have asked me if you know, I need, um, I have a website where they can like check my um, product. I'm currently working on the website mm. and it will be ready in about maximum of three weeks, actually. Three weeks. Mm. Yeah, so maybe by the year. time. Oh, we might this launch year. it in this episode. Yeah, yeah okay, maybe. Sure. I so, give a plug in at the end. Yep. <laughs> you have some wonderful faces and models in Tamin and I. Yeah, I saw some of the models on your page. I mean, apart from you. I think you could do better. So. <laughs> if you want to, don't I, say that. I, 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 it was, I, I, yes. Interestingly, it was pro bono, right? It was yeah, free. Yeah, These are right, friends yeah. and family. You've insulted friends and family, right? There. Look, man, you gotta you gotta be competitive out in this fashion industry, man. There's no there's no time for feelings. It's ruthless. Yeah. I can. Uh, okay, give me that Naomi Campbell walk. You ready? That's it. No, no. I can't. No, I can't walk audio. Why are you posing for audio? They can't. I'm posing they for can't the camera. See you walk. <laughs> well, if you want to see to me posing like a model. 
Follow us on YouTube and check out the video. Okay. okay. There you go. Just like that. Um, I have I do have a point though on fashion generally. I am. Um, I went on a Facebook one. Models what? No. Why is your mind always on supermodels? No. Yeah, like, yeah, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> racism and general discrimination in fashion. Um, there's a lot of like Gucci um, and like Prada and like different brands have like done generally racist things in the past. Mm. They've like released like racist designs and then they be like, oh, sorry, we didn't notice at the time that it was racist. And everyone's like, you knew you're just trying to get publicity. Yeah. So being a, I feel like a lot of, um, I see on like Instagram all the time, all these like celebrities are like, oh, you guys will spend like 5,000 on a Gucci bag, but you want to support like someone's black business, which makes mm -hmm. like a really nice brand or like your friend's business. Mm -hmm. So as, especially because there are a lot of women in fashion, yeah. uh, do you feel as a black powerful queen that you- Ooh, African queen. African right. queen. Do you feel that like, running the business, it kind of appeals to different kinds of people? Or do you find that your clientele, like, do you think they're the same people who would buy like high-end brands, like your customer base? Do you think that they're more kind of um, socially conscious or do you think they're just like, oh, I like the design? Well, the fact that you even do one-on-one -on -one interaction, you know, I guess you have probably better insight as to who your customer base is. I think that's it, cause it's more like personalized Personal, service, yeah. right? Mm. So like almost everybody that orders for me, I know them. Right. So, um, but with regards to the bigger brands, I think everybody now is generally more accepting of like um, African fashion. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and that's what I sell, right? So people just say, I like it, I'm going to buy it. It's true. But right? that's it. let me challenge you a little. They, they like African fashion, but at what point is it the fine line between I like African fashion to cultural appropriation? You know, so at what point is it? Uh, how do you distinguish, you know, this person just wants to be seen as woke, but they're not woke, and yet they want to do con rules. Dreadlocks. I think you you know from the number of repeat customers you have, right? Mm. If somebody buys your, you know, outfits once and they just go, you know, post or whatever, you know that, okay, maybe they don't really like it. Or but like if they keep or coming, a party or something. Exactly, then, but yeah. if they keep coming back and they really just want to support your brand, they, yeah. I don't think you would really waste money just to show that you're woke, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not very. I don't know what's it, what's it called. Uh, front lining, not gaslighting. It's called like showcase. It's called <laughs> doing something when you're just trying to do it to show that you that you pretend you care, but it's not actually. Um, damn, there's actually a word for it. But basically, it's just like showcasing that you like mm -hmm. care. So it's like when people post, oh yeah, like don't be racist Jewish people, and then like they'll go and be racist Jewish. Like, hypocriticism. <laughs> hypocriticism, and it's just like just generally to like show people that you're woke, but you're mm -hmm. not actually. It happens a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's quite unfortunate, but. Well, as long as the money keeps coming in. Spoken like a boss Hashtag boss Spoken like a true Nigerian. Wow. As long as the money keeps... That was a money dish. Uh. Um, well, I was going to say, what, so what are your plans for the future? You said you want to branch out into other brands. You said you're looking at a, a winter range. Um, are you looking at branching into like perfumes, uh, lingerie, anything different, sportswear? So you remember that I mentioned how many African prints are now many Ankara prints are now used for like spandex and different types of more versatile um, fabrics. I'm actually looking at swimwear, right? But uh, most importantly, because I'm um, registered in Nigeria, obviously, so I'm looking to actually open a ready-to-wear store in Nigeria with regards to like making belts or perfumes that we later on. But in the for the UK market, I'm definitely looking at winter wear for now. Right? So about gym leggings. Yeah. Yeah. That's, no, no, that's I, think, I think I'll be a big seller. Are you looking not for, for me, not for <laughs> me. <laughs> I just so don't, why not? Your price? eyes perk up when you said, oh, opportunity to be had here. But you know, I'm also trying not to. So at, this is like the foundation stage. Mm. If the foundation is not solid, like the Bible says, what happens, right? It's all gonna fall down, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so the house built on um, exactly right so i don't want to be doing everything sure. right so i'm trying to but it's for now it's a bit it's a bit difficult because people just order what they like mm. right but i want my brand to be known for something so that's what i'm currently working on mm. right so yeah okay so then talking about knowing your brand opposed to other brands on let's say the shelf or in, mm -hmm. um what is your plan for for that quick identification. So mm -hmm. is it like 
you know how Gucci has the big G and you know it's all this mm-hmm. stuff. Um, is there going to be a particular style that you're hoping to bring out that separates you from other competitors? So, well, the way Gucci has the big G, I have the big B. All so, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> big B. <laughs> so, um, my logo, uh, when I blow, my mm. logo will stand out, right? Mm. It's very simple, right? And that's what I'm sort of all about. Simplicity, but, you know, classy. So, with regards to, like, outfits, like, what my outfits would be all about, like I told you, I'm still sort of working on that. Okay. But I've uh, I recently reached out to the guys who actually manufactured this print um, mm-hmm. in China, trying to make exclusive prints just for mm-hmm. me to mm-hmm. make all my outfits. Mm-hmm. Well, not all, but most of them, so that like um, obviously no no one else can buy it, so they know that it's for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Um... To be able to distinguish yourself from different competitors, here's this is something that we've kind of alluded to a little bit earlier was that because we're no Africans or you know bootleg, we're very known for copywriting uh, yeah. styles or getting Gucci bags for two, ten pounds off the high street and things like that. Yeah. So how are you going to safeguard against people copying your print or kind of thing? Because the reason I bring this up is there's now copyright laws that's being enforced in Ghana in particular. I'm not sure about Nigerian market. It's called the Traditional Cultural Expression Act. Mm -hmm. So it kind of helps with safeguarding for particularly attires um, for people to go out and copy paste someone's style. So hopefully you kind of have that in your forebrain or Mm -hmm. back brain kind of thing. You think about how you're going to safeguard against that. So, um, I haven't thought about how I'll safeguard against that, but I generally try not to like copy people's style. So sometimes, yes. you know, people just come to you and tell you, make this exact thing for me. Mm. What I do is I also like sketch. So I tweak one or two things, or we should, we should probably do it this way just because of, you know, the mm. whole right thing. So mm. that's what I do. But I would definitely look into I that to see that. if Nigeria has anything like that. I'm sure they do, but, you know, it's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> not official yet. No. <laughs> yeah. So it needs to be greased up a little. Yeah, it's know. a little on the, on behind the table, on the table action. Um, so, Vicky, I know that you started in 2017. Uh, you've come with quite some ways. You've learned some things about what it means to run as an SME. Um, do you have any advice towards those that are getting into that space or, or any big lessons that you can share so people can watch out for for themselves? Hmm. So in the same 2017, I went to do my NYS, what every Nigerian does, right? To sell your country you said country. I didn't do it. <laughs> I'm bougie. I'm not, I'm not going there. Yeah, it's, sure like, you, it's like military you, character. Did you guys do that? I, no. We're I'm, bougie. I'm, 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 I told you, I'm, we're big in the game. We don't do such things. <laughs> Well, I just paid but, someone to do that for me. But if well, the Nigerian government is listening, I did it. I did it. If the government is listening, well, you're not going back to work in Nigeria, so you don't need it, right? Yeah, yeah, you need it if you're gonna work. Yeah. Exactly. So right after I did that, um, well, I was lucky enough to work in a consulting company, so I did not like go to mm. teach in a school or anything. And I'm such a big proponent of um starting young, right? Like if you already can identify what your passion is, just start. Like in doesn't matter how small it is um unfortunately in nigeria it's difficult to start any business if you don't generally not even nigeria it's difficult to start any business if you don't have capital and seeing that uh, many nigerian banks don't um, give small businesses loans a couple of them now do like i I used to work in gt bank Mm -hmm. i was an account manager for two years and there was the fashion credits just for fashion businesses, right? Mm-hmm. So, and a lot of people actually tapped into that, right? But at the time before, because it was before I started working in GT Bank, I didn't know anything about that. So it might be good for you to do a lot of research, right? Look for where you can get capital. If you cannot get capital, then just start with whatever you have, right? Like you could just start in your house. So what I did was... Um, I, my boss then um, at the consulting company was sort of like my mentor. I think another thing that really helps is having well-grounded mentors. Mm-hmm. So he, he obviously he owned the company. He, he knew 
the owner of Rough and Tumble. I don't know if you know Rough and Tumble. So he introduced me to her. She also became sort of like my mini mentor for a short period. You know, she told me what to do. And then from then, the MBA as well introduced me to like um, an entrepreneur. And I think it's also really good to know, um, to read about people that have done it and failed because failure is part of success. So like um, I was um, hooked up with like, um, an entrepreneur, former entrepreneur. So he had done it before and failed. So now he's back to nine to five. So working with him closely has really helped me because he always tells me, oh, don't do this. This will not work. Do that. I did it. It didn't work for me, right? And also another thing people get wrong is thinking that the sky is not big for everybody to fly. The sky is big. Because they might say, oh, the fashion business is industry is saturated. Oh, yeah. But if you can find where your USP is, Make sure that your customer service and customer experience is like really top notch, right? I think you can really distinguish yourself irrespective. So, um, you know, obviously I have a lot of people in my age group that are also fashion designers. I didn't think, oh, because we're all like competing for, I don't think that we're all competing for the same set of people. I think we would all make it, right? So I have like a bunch of them as friends. I always speak to them so that like you guys can share experiences, tell me what's working, tell me what's not working. Nobody's an island. Like you cannot decide to stay in your house. Oh, I'm going to do everything by myself. If I tell people my plans, it will fail. I think the most important thing is actually to speak to people, get people's feedback, not just on your outfits, like on generally on how you're doing things. I think it really, really helps. Yeah. And she always share your ideas. Like don't audit. <laughs> You don't have the best I feel idea. A lot in the of world. people are scared to share yeah, ideas so. because you hear like, oh, this guy had an idea for an app, someone stole it, and now they're a millionaire. And you're just there, like, it was my idea. I thought of Facebook. Yeah, sure, you did, buddy. You lose it. Get back, to, <laughs> get back to McDonald's cleaning dishes. Shut up. You're never gonna be rich. So you, sure, people yeah. worry that if you have a really good idea or like a design, someone's gonna steal you, you it. You don't so. you don't have the best ideas, to be honest. Like nobody has the best ideas. The disrespect. Yeah. No, like <laughs> unless, it's just unless the you're in the shower and then all of a sudden you have like that epiphany. light bulb moment. Yes. To be honest, so when you share share your idea you'll be shocked how you know other people have thought about it and they can help you refine it yeah, yeah. so it's feedback. always good to get feedback speak reflection to that's why you're gonna yeah. learn a lot of in the mba sure. I like the <laughs> maps, yeah so that's my take okay good Fantastic. Nice. uh thanks a lot thank you for coming in we really appreciate it thank um you. how could any of our listeners followers watchers uh, be able to follow you and get in touch with your brand on instagram uh, by bitney on twitter same and your yeah. website is website going to be... by bitney.com by right. hopefully totally. it'll be live by the time we this episode is launched yeah, hopefully yeah. <laughs> yeah. um but yeah we really appreciate it and uh good luck with finishing up the mba good luck with you know keep growing and expanding and then uh Remember, you have some handsome faces in us as well. <laughs> you might, might see us modeling. Us. Yeah. 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 We, we might do some reels and some modeling in a little bit. Yeah, we already yeah. purchased our own attire. So, you know, be ready to see it on, on and off of the yeah, Instagram. Yeah, anyone that comes through um, Different Roots Radio, get five pounds off. Oh, yeah, damn, yeah. guys. Think of all the cryptocurrency you could buy with that five pounds. Wow. Okay. <laughs> all 10,000 bits. <laughs> One zero 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 one. Yes. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, tune in uh, in two weeks' time for another episode of Different Roots Radio. Have a good one. See you guys. Peace. Don't forget to hit the like button to subscribe to Different Roots Radio on YouTube, Twitter, and all audio listening channels. Our talks air every other Monday. One love.